17 year old Ashley Reeves was a high school junior who was residing in Millstack a village in Illinois with her parents and younger sister Casey Ashley was doing well in school had many friends and even a boyfriend named Jeremy who was adored by her parents Ashley was eagerly awaiting graduation little did she know that just ten year before Ashley would experience the unbelievable and live to tell her story the Ashley Reeves story is based on the extraordinary true story of a common teenage girl who had to battle for her life three times first in the woods then in the hospital and finally in the court also there is a movie made in 2021 on this true horrific event called left for dead so before we head into our today's story if you are a fan of bizarre and mysterious stories hit that red button and turn on all the notifications also there is a little play button hidden in the video if you can find it please comment on its time stamp so let's get started on thursday of april 27th 2006 ashley told her parents she was going to a job interview in fairview heights a city approximately 20 minutes away from millstead ashley told her parents she would play basketball after the interview and would be home by her 10 pm curfew ashley carried a change of clothes and left for the interview at around 3:30 pm in jeremy's car which she had borrowed for the day by 10:30 in the night curfew had come and gone yet there was no sign of ashley her mother michelle asked her youngest daughter casey if she had spoken to ashley but casey said she hadn't heard from her sister all day michelle and casey called ashley several times and left multiple text messages but she never responded unlike her following her gut feeling that something had gone wrong michelle called st clair county sheriff's office at first officers were sure ashley was out with her friends and had lost track of time but 8 hours into the investigation they found jeremy's car abandoned in ladderman park belleville 15 minutes away from ashley's home investigators found ashley's bag inside the car which contained the clothes she would have worn if she gone to play basketball detectives quickly realized this wasn't a typical case of a rebellious teen resisting her parents strict curfew this was a missing persons investigation and the time was the essence detectives brought jeremy in for questioning since he was ashley's boyfriend and it was his car she had been driving but they quickly understood he was not involved in her disappearance jeremy told detectives he had let ashley borrow his car to go to a job interview followed by a basketball game detectives questioned why ashley would play basketball at a park so far away from her home when there was one right in her neighborhood unless she was meeting someone while detectives inched closer in the search for ashley michelle called the phone company since ashley was only 17 her phone was in her mother's name she was able to get access to her phone's records detailing all her incoming and outgoing calls michelle went through the records and realized there were several calls from one specific number michelle called the number and connected with a 26 year old samson shelton michelle asked samson if he had seen or heard from ashley he said no and before she could question why he was communicating with her teenage daughter he abruptly hung up the phone fortunately ashley kept her friends updated on her private life and what they told detectives sent chills down michelle's spine according to ashley's friends she was romantically involved with an older man the two would often gather to play basketball together and ashley had plans to meet him the day she went missing that man was samson shelton samson 
was a driver's educational teacher and gym coach at a nearby high school. He was also a pro wrestler on the side. Unsurprisingly, his nickname was The Teacher. Detectives discovered that Samson was Ashley's teacher in 2001 when she was in the 7th grade. They had reconnected in February 2006, two months before she went missing. They often met in Belleville, where Samson lived with his mother and grandmother, near Ladderman Park, where detectives found Jeremy's abandoned vehicle. It was now Friday, April 20th, and Ashley had been missing for an entire night. Michelle was overcome with pain as disturbing thoughts crossed her mind. Was Ashley cold? Was she hurt? Was she suffering? Detectives went to the high school where Samson worked and took him in for questioning. Almost quickly, they knew he was involved in Ashley's disappearance. At first, Samson kept cool and calm attitude. He was friendly, polite, and even cooperative with the investigation. However, as detectives uncovered more and more of his deceptions, the truth began to spill out of his mouth. When questioned about his relationship with Ashley, Samson said the two were simply friends who rarely met to play basketball. Samson maintained his relationship with Ashley was strictly platonic. But when confronted with statements from Ashley's friends that their relationship was not just platonic, but more than that. He changed his story in a desperate attempt to victimize himself. Samson told detectives Ashley had become fascinated with him. He painted the picture of an obsessed teen with a crush who called him at all hours of the day and night. Samson said he had been avoiding Ashley for days, hoping she would leave him alone several hours into the interrogation. Samson confirmed he was with Ashley on April 27th, the day she went missing. According to Samson, he was driving when he got into an argument with Ashley. He wanted to end the relationship, but Ashley got upset and started screaming at him. He pulled over, unfastened Ashley's seatbelt and told her to get off the car. When she resisted, he pulled her out and left her on the side of the road. Samson insisted Ashley was still alive when he last saw her, that there was no way he would have hurt her because he had quote-unquote very weak stomach. Samson said he cared for Ashley and was just as concerned for her well-being as her family. But would someone who cared for another drop them stranded on the side of the road in the dark? Phone records showed Samson never even attempted to call Ashley afterwards to see if she was safe. Instead, he went to a local country bar and danced the night away. Samson's story had changed so many times. Detectives did not believe a word he said. They pleaded for him to tell the truth. Ashley had now been missing for nearly 30 hours and time was running out. It was only when detectives mentioned the disappointment Samson's grandmother would feel towards his actions that he started to cry. Twelve hours into the interrogation, Samson described in cold and disturbing detail precisely what he had done to Ashley and where he had left her to die. According to Samson's videotaped confession, he didn't just pull Ashley out of his vehicle and leave her on the side of the road. The part-time pro wrestler put the teen in a chokehold and dragged her out of his car. He then heard a loud pop and Ashley went limp. Realizing he had snapped her neck, Samson panicked and pulled her into the woods where he strangled her with his bare hands. When he realized Ashley was still breathing, he strangled her again with his belt. Using his foot for leverage, Samson put the belt around Ashley's neck and pulled as hard as he could until the belt snapped. After the belt broke, 
Samson choked Ashley a third and final time with his hands before taking off and leaving her to die on the cold hard ground deep in the woods. Following his confession, Samson agreed to lead detectives to Ashley's body in Citizens Park, a 45 acre park in Belleville located only 12 minutes away from Ashley's home. However, it had rained throughout the night and once they arrived at the park, Samson could not remember exactly where he had left Ashley. Armed with flashlights, detectives frantically searched throughout the woods for 30 minutes as they began to question whether it was all a trick by Samson, they finally saw Ashley. She was lying on her back. Her hands were up to her chest. Her tongue was sticking out of her mouth and hundreds of insect bites covered her body. As the disappointment of being unable to save Ashley in time washed over detectives, her hands suddenly moved. Then her chest began to rise. Ashley was alive. Miraculously, after being attempted three times to strangle nearly to death and left in the cold for over 30 hours, Ashley had survived. EMTs rushed to the scene and transported her to the local hospital where she was put into an induced coma. Detectives knew the importance of the first 48 hours and wasted no time in search for the missing teen. Had they not been able to convince Samson to lead them to her, it is highly unlikely Ashley would have been found in time. Samson was arrested and charged with first degree attempted murder. Finally, Ashley made an impossible recovery, although she could not remember the day Samson tried to take her life. Ashley refused to let his offensive actions prevent her from fulfilling her dreams. A few months after the attack, the incredible strong and brave teen had relearned how to walk, eat and drink. A year later, she graduated from high school and started volunteering Violence Prevention Center. Today, Ashley is 32 and has two children. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think about today's video? If you like such kind of strange and mysterious videos, you can check out my whole playlist. And if you are new to our channel, please hit that red button and turn on all the notifications. Till then, take care.